Terror Island, Wednesday the 14th of May 1969. Dear friends and colleagues, over the past couple of years it will have become apparent to the more perceptive among you that RTE, henceforth to be known as the factory, has been developing along certain regrettable but inevitable lines. These tendencies towards a large impersonal technocracy have been justified on the grounds of efficiency, the same grounds on which the wholesale exploitation of the resources of this country by our speculative leaders is based. In this sense, the factory is fulfilling one of its functions, that is to say, the reflecting of the country as a whole. This, of course, is ignoring one of its other, equally important functions, the educational one. It is also ignoring the fact that one not only has the duty of reporting fairly what is happening, but if the situation is serious enough, of intervening personally, not as an organisation man, but as a man. What can one person do? When confronted by a monolith which proposes to eat you, even in the nicest possible manner, you must do something. The worst thing to do is to allow the monolith to define the terms of the battle, Ignore its pleas for logic, because it uses logic to obscure the truth. Ignore its calls for reasonableness, the assumptions and premises of which are entirely questionable. Query its sacred cows, its gods and its liturgies, its systems, its impeccable phrases imported from the respectable corruption of business management. Ignore, above all, its offers of a comfortable place in the technocratic womb. What all this amounts to is that you can do absolutely nothing. You are completely trapped. You must now enter a period of despair in which you will fulfil your functions in a perfect, mechanical, unthinking, organisational manner. And this is all that is required by the system of organisation in which you work. And that is why the organisation decays and becomes a bloated and swelling corpse, feeding the increasing number of parasites, but incapable of directing itself because there is no life, no human spirit to quicken it. This, I suggest, is the situation in which the factory finds itself. This, despite the efforts of bright young men and women in advertising agencies to string gaudy beads round the neck of the corpse, the vile body, in an effort to persuade the people of this country that their property is still working on their behalf. It is not. It is simply a vehicle for the frustrated fantasies of ad men, the megalomania of insane tech cuts and the sanctification of the acts of a conservative government. If one looks closely at those lines, one will see evidence of the greatest sellout ever perpetrated on a nation by the nation itself through its children. And what do I propose to do about it? Mine is a personal philosophy of responsible irresponsibility. It attempts to counter the organization's pseudo-philosophy of irresponsible responsibility, if you follow me. I propose to get a boat and sail off, Charlie Bubbles-like, into the setting sun. All contributions will be tolerated and appreciated if if they're in the form of moral support. Yours sincerely, Bob Quinn. 14th of May, 1969.